I'll come back. 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 Not okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Are, are we online? <laughs> Hello, world. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to the Barcast, where the bar gets lower every single week. It's pretty fucking low right now. We really do bring it pretty low, man. Uh, I mean, Unlike the flat earthers who think that uh, they're you're this flat, if you lower it and you lower it and you lower it, you'll come across the other side of the planet. So, <laughs> hey, yeah, we're just explorers looking for the other side of the planet. Yep. So, priest, did you forget what you were gonna say because you can't? No, I uh, can. forgot to mute Twitch, so I just heard like an echo. I was like, oh no. Um, your bartenders for this evening will be a non-pencil. Oh God, I choked on soda just now. Flame and Warfare. Oh, yes. Milk. Just take a big old bite pencil. Ravage. No. Butterscheiss beepish. My name's Flutter Priest. This week we have a very special guest. One that we've been looking forward to for a very long time. We met up with him at HRPC. The wonderful Minty Root. I. For those who have never tuned in before, we are a community-based podcast. Or you ask for the guests, we get them on and make them miserable for two hours. Uh, all of our proceeds also go to Horse Rescue Charity, so that's the cool thing we'll talk about later on in the cast. If you yep. would, if you ever hear the word layers during the cast, be sure to take a nice healthy drink, but don't actually get yourself sick because we don't want anyone going to the hospital again. Again. Uh, the lovely non-pencil is going to be watching the chat for any sort of questions. Pencil will see you have some topics, and we will not ask our guest. Well, first of all, Jesus Christ, Priest, just because I can talk at the speed of light doesn't mean you have to. Hmm. Uh, second of all, in the chat, I will not be fielding any questions to our guests that have to do with politics or religion or philosophy or actual locations or actual names because that's how we stay safe, kids. So, however, Minty is a comfortable, brave soul, and uh, we're going to ask Minty anything you forward. So, get get to it, chat. I. Alex, that okay. There's there's a question from Alex Priest. How, How many, many layers, layers are there in his dick? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, technically two. Oh, lewd. Uh, Explain the layers. Is from the star storm and asks, "How many layers are you wearing?" Uh, one, two. Yep, that's all. Not wearing any bro. Awesome. awesome. Then uh, we have some actual base interview questions that we're going to go to before we jump into our thread out on film fiction. If you guys have any questions, be sure to put them into the thread or in uh, the film fiction thread. So let's start with uh, who are you and what have you done for the fandom? Uh, so my real name is Alexandre Belfay. I basically just a Canadian animator who just decided to jump into the MLP fandom because the MLP fandom was pretty interesting. Uh, the very first thing I ever done in the Brony fandom was uh, uh, Project Undercloud, which I refuse to even look at anymore because I just see all the flaws. Uh, you might have seen my work in Good Morning Baltimore, uh, Luna's Determination, uh, the Babscon promos, the CMPC promo from 2017, uh, Overture to season six, um, the s deleted scene from the season uh, season five finale, and a few other projects. So, yeah, I just do pony animations, usually more dark theme, but once in a while something more lighthearted. So, yeah. Oh, and uh, I'm a special effect artist in real movies. I'm not allowed right now to say which movie because uh, technically just saying something right here would count as an official statement and we're not allowed to do that so oh well still very much excitement very mm -hmm. much excite um question number two would be how did you personally get into the brony fandom okay so that one was because my best friend did hide his pony toys 
<laughs> okay, so, this sounds like a story. So, you know, I was kind of getting depressed. College was starting, you know, the, that one time in your life where you're just thinking, yeah, what's my purpose in life? What can I do with my life? And uh, mm -hmm. I just, you know, I get more involved with talking to people on Facebook and I just get back with my best friend. And we, you know, he invites me at one point at his house to just do stuff and play games. So at that time, I finally had uh, my own laptop so I could bring it up at his house. And, it, you know, I just realized that staying at his place was more comfortable than just staying in my place alone, just doing nothing while my parents were not there. So, and I realized at one point that he had some pony figurines on top of his, of his computer. And, you know, I knew about a fandom a bit uh, earlier because I read about uh, that on well, back then it was called The Daily Wet. It was basically just talking about geek culture and crazy stuff. And there was some people who posted stuff about uh, the Brony fandom, like the, the, the guy who did the, the physics presentation about MLP, where uh, he basically said, yeah, the sonic rate boom is like that, time, uh, that much time, the speed of sound. And, you know, I watched it because I was kind of curious, but I didn't really know about the show. I just thought, hey, it's kind of ironic like you know we had lots of uh dark stuff like uh, for example there was uh you know the batman movies that tried to be even darker than usual and right. you know most movies were trying to be darker so the idea that you had something more lighthearted that people would enjoy and i thought okay it's probably some kind of ironic fandom and you know there was some people who tried to do more dark themed stuff like uh fighting his magic which I thought was kind of more ironic than anything because the characters were appealing. But when I found my best friend with pony figurines, I was thinking, oh, this is a legit thing. And he basically, <laughs> talks, he basically talked a bit about it and I was like, yeah, I guess I could give it a try. And obviously my parents would be kind of weirded out. So I just thought, oh, I'll just watch it when they're not there, like watch it at night and Apparently, they found the right time in their life to decide to go to Europe and just what uh, to go, you know, trip to France. And, um, and I was just thinking, okay, during that time, I'm just gonna watch as much Pony as I can. And I watched the two first seasons in like two weeks, and I had a freaking good time. So, um, and you know, I found out that it was kind of interesting and I kind of wanted my parents not to wonder what I was doing, kind of wanted to share a bit uh, what I liked. And uh, I was thinking, what the hell do I do? And the right thing happened when I basically forced my mom to watch Friendship is Witchcraft. Oh yes. my god! <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. nice. so, you know, she, she knows I'm not much of a drinker and she thinks, okay, um, like you're gonna be the dry, uh, you know, the designated driver. Where, like while I go with a, at a bar with your dad, and you you can come because you know you're gonna be bored if you stay outside. And obviously, I would just get a soft drink. And apparently, being the one who's the designated driver at a bar gives you some free drinks, even though that's just cokes. Right. So I just told my mom because I kind of didn't have as much good time as everybody else. I was just thinking, I'll have my revenge. And she was thinking, oh, when's it going to be your revenge? And I was thinking, you'll see. And my revenge was to make them watch Friendship is Witchcraft. Because, you know, back then I was not sure if they'd be uh, enjoying watching the actual show. So I just thought, oh, well, let's just watch something a bit more ironic. And I basically did, which... Um, was probably not the best idea because she thought that Luna's name was Melestia. Wow, oh, God. <laughs> wow, what? Yeah, she did realize, oh, that's that part is parody, okay? So uh, around the end of 20, uh, 2012, I decided to throw uh, just a panel application for Bronicon 2013 and just thinking, yeah, just let's try something because I knew some stuff about Flash and I was thinking, yeah, good, try myself at the Brony fandom, try some pony animation. So I sent a, a panel about pony animation before even doing pony animations. So during, because for some reason that year I decided to send a, a panel applications and send the, the acceptance messages super early. So I had like six months to learn how to make pony animations 
before even uh, before the panel, which I did. And it was quite interesting. That's basically how I came up with Project Undercloud. And at that time, I didn't really know much about lip sync because most of my stuff was just subtitles. So I basically just said, yeah, it's going to be a narration. And it's like, yeah, if at the end I kind of figure out how to do that, like Derp is going to say something in real time instead. And it worked, I guess. Like, you know, you could spot the, the parts where I did know uh, all this stuff. But people enjoyed it. And, you know, back in the days, people kind of enjoyed pretty much everything. They were, yeah, you, they kind of understood that the Brony fandom were, was at the very beginning. So they kind of expected stuff not to be perfect at that right. time. And it was kind of my introduction to Brony fandom. And then I met some people, some local people who later became some great friends. So, oh, awesome. Yeah. It's not very often you hear about people in the fandom meeting up with like their local community and developing connections through that. Well, yeah, this, the... this fandom has many layers. Yep. Oh my oh. god. Just like onions and ogres. <sighs> Let, let's let's get the little minty drink in. I know he has beer, so. Yep. All right. Then we'll segue into the next question. Uh what would you say is your favorite part of this fandom? The online community, fanfics, cons? Uh, obviously, there's animations, there's music. What, what, you yourself are an animator, but what do you find yourself going back to? Uh, well, I kind of guess with my daily life, just brony music, because, uh, you know, I am at work and we have the right to play our own music. So the, the only thing I could actually do is just, you know, go with some pony music or just video game music, like uh, the Super Mario Galaxy soundtrack which is freaking amazing but i always come back to those pony songs that i liked it's mostly just older stuff because i haven't updated my library in a long time and i still haven't uh, updated my uh playlist as well because for some reason if you it's weird but for uh, samsung phones if you take out the, the, the sd card all your playlists are gonna disappear you're, just, you're gonna have to redo it but I always come back to pony music, and I don't know if it's just the range of all the stuff they can do. Like there's some comedic uh, songs like "The Hurt Join It," which is mostly just 2013 and 2012 nostalgia, but it's just fun to watch. I mean, to to listen to. Uh, there's uh, for uh, obviously there's some orchestral stuff like "Melodic Pony," which is just feels epic it just you listen to that and just wonder why the hell movie scores don't sound like that because it, there is just that much range and you feel like there's a storytelling itself in the background but you also just feel all the range of emotions like it's not just one emotion but just goes with a roller coaster of ups and downs and just feels good so just taking yeah what if as a fan animator i could just capture that feel and obviously, you know, fan animation is a bit more complex, so it's still tough. But not because it's tough that I shouldn't try that. Uh, there's also, well, obviously, pony conventions, because you just see all the people who are... And that, that hurts me a bit. You just see people are ready to just pull an event, but since they're working on it, they don't experience it that much. Like, there's some people who just stay at the... Um, uh, the, the, the Not the vendor, but... Uh, the badge line, they, they're the ones just working in the badge line, all the, the con, and they just, they meet people, they don't, they don't experience the con. So I kind of feel bad for them. Obviously, there, it's not all the cons. There's some people who just do that, and you see the, the, the badge line just stops at some point, and then they're free to do everything they want. But just the idea that you'd have people just working hard just to get one convention to go right for three days. Like, they have to work for an entire year just to get those three days right. So. That's effort. That's effort from Incarnate. So, so much yeah. effort. All right. Then the next question that we have is, if there's one thing you could say to your followers or your fans, what would it be? Uh, look, uh, when I work with fan animations, the one thing that I want from people is obviously to be inspired, but to be inspired to create. Like, um, because one of the the problems that I've seen with uh, uh, lots of people is that they look at fan animators and just say, I wish I could be a fan animator. And I'm just thinking, no, wishing won't do shit. Like, 
you have to actually jump, you download the programs, you learn, you figure out what the hell you can do to actually get something done. And obviously it's going to be different from people to people. Some people who just animate everything in Flash don't even edit. They do the entire animation within the same Flash file and they just deliver that. And which I respect because I used to do that back in the days, but uh, as fan animation gets more complex, you just you just have to... You, you know, you go uh, split it up and then you re-edit it. But you need to just do it. You don't let it just happen. And obviously there's some stuff that just happened, like you have software that you struggle at getting. Uh, for 3D, uh, you can go with Blender, which is free. For 2D, this could be a bit tougher. But uh, if you have a, a student ID, you can get a student license for Toon Boom for like 12 bucks a month, which That's is not bad. that expensive. Uh, for Adobe, it's a bit more expensive, but you get all of the stuff. Like you get Photoshop, you get Flash, you get After Effects, you get Premiere Pro. So you can basically do everything you ever want to with just their suite. So I want people to be inspired to create because you know I'm not gonna gonna live forever. So if the you know if I have to step down from fan animation, I want other people to actually do their own stuff. And obviously, I don't want people to just do the same stuff as I do because you know, I have my own vision of what I want to do, but some other people have their own vision. And if you see, if it's just my own vision that I'm going to push and everything just looks the same, it's going to be boring after a while. So I want we, people to create. Let's say, uh, Priest, we always edit our videos, right? Oh, yeah, no, we have flawless editing. Yeah, all the editing. I'm sure Davis would tell you about how great our videos are edited, right, Davis? Oh, my God. Spoiler alert, we, we don't... don't edit our videos. <laughs> Don't bring Davis into this. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Then uh, the next question that we have, the final actual interview question. Um, let's get political. Let's get controversial. Who is best pony? Luna. Ooh. Luna. Just straight up. Luna. That was oh, so yeah. little hesitation, too. Look, I'm wearing a Luna shirt right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing a shirt like a loser. Ha. Oh, you! <laughs> I bet you're naked right now. Eh, I mean, I mean, it's hot, it's hot here. It's yeah, so hot here. sure. All right. I bet then... you're naked under your clothes. Ooh. That's true. I feel so violated right now. I need to put on more layers. I've got a skeleton <laughs> under the oh. skin. Oh God! Too spoopy. All right, then I'm going to grab a question from the chat. First of all, thanks, Fiora, for rehosting us. Every rehost helps. Yeah. Um, and the next uh, next thing was the other other guy has a question. Uh, how big is your dick? Okay, uh, this is a question that is hard to answer, but 7.5 inches. Nice. That's respect to pool's fuck, man. Yeah. You all sound right, like surprised. Thanks. You're like, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> Then we're going to grab some questions from our Fim Fiction thread out on Fim Fiction. Wow, good job, Priest. Um, Rundown Jet, our resident Canadian, now has some questions. Starting with number one. What is your favorite meal, snack, or food stuff that is really unhealthy but just so good? Oh, my gosh. I'm going to answer like a true Quebecer, a poutine. <gasps> yes! Yes, yes, yes. Poutine. I have I have a plushie of poutine pony. So yep. 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 Yes. All right. Question number two. What is the biggest or weirdest fear that you have? Uh, losing my my arms. I guess. Oh. Whoa. What? What? Okay. That's Question. real. How? Yeah. How do you have a phobia of losing your arms? Is that just? Because when I was young, you know, at school, uh, uh, they, they basically showed uh, uh, some kind of uh, documentary about a guy who lost his uh, both ar arms uh, with, uh, uh, I think, a bombing. Jeez. And I was just thinking, shit, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. So, yeah. And now you're afraid of it. That's such <sighs> a specific phobia. Yep. Thanks, school. <laughs> I learned a lot about yourself at school. It's true. Number three, why is bagged milk the best milk? 
I don't know. I don't even buy bag milk, even though I'm Canadian. You're a man you? of quality. You're a man I'm of quality. I'm proud of you. Like, I mean, at work, we have free breakfast, so they, we have milk, but it's not bag milk, because apparently it's more trouble than anything, so... Yeah, yeah, it is. You're right. Like, it's more for, you know, it's more for a big family. Like, you have that one thing that you're gonna get, you know, get used in, like, a day or two, so it doesn't... Uh... But they're just one little guy living in a, an apartment alone, so... Because if you see a lot of people ask, how the hell you, you know, because you cannot close it, uh, the thing is that you're not meant to. You just have it's to... So... They, they have like a roll clip. They have for... a clip. Uh, they have a, a specific clip for milk bags. Mm. It's like a chip clip, but for milk. Yeah. It's done. Yep. Thank you. Question four. What is your one annoying habit? So something you do that annoys other people or something that other people do that annoys you? Uh, checking my phone all the time, which is a thing that I do even at work, like, you know, checking Discord or checking Twitter, uh, which is really bad because I always keep on, you know, it loses productivity and I keep doing that even at home. And uh, there's one weird thing about Toon Boom is that uh, if you want to open up Toon Boom or you just go back to the application, it takes like 10 seconds to just open again. So just that 10 seconds, like you just look at Discord and you just want to say hi or just see what the hell happens. Uh, you, yeah, it just adds up to minutes and minutes and minutes of lost productivity. Oh, so, yeah. That sucks. All right. Then number five. What's the theme song for your sex life? Ah, uh, good question. Um, if you say it's just like the Canadian national anthem, I'm not going to know how to handle that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't answer that. I'll probably just... Um... Yeah, uh, I don't talk a lot about my sex life because there's not much to, to talk about. Oh. So I, so not so it's kind of more dancing with yourself. Uh, or no, no, the sound no. of silence. <laughs> oh. No, it's more that I mostly just doing that at pony conventions. No, not at the convention itself, more at during oh. the event. Minty. So, Minty, are you getting yeah. late at cons? Are you getting late at cons? Well, of course. Attaboy! Yeah. Hey, proud of you, man! That's awesome! Uh, All right. the, the thing, though, is that, you know, real life, not much, because I'm mostly just focusing on a fandom right now, so... And the problem is that most of my friends are brony friends, so they either... I either just meet them when I go to cons or just when I, um, you know, when we have brony meetups. So, right. Eh, I mean, it's not the end of the world either, just kind of disappointing. All right. So, let's go to the next question. Um, how would you describe yourself using only three words? Ah. Uh, Is it lots small. of layers? <laughs> oh, wait. Oh my god, players. <sighs> oh, seriously, a second time? Oh no, what have <laughs> I done? Yay! I'm sorry. Ah. You're not sorry, don't lie. It's true. Uh, skinny weird nerd? Aww. Aww. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I want to give you a hug for not... that. No, I'm not. <laughs> He's not wrong. I met him. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number seven. If your entire life thus far was a movie, what would be the title of it? Uh, hide your pony toys next time? <laughs> <laughs> nice! Okay. Okay. I almost made a bad quip just now. I... <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do it anyway because I feel I feel guilty about what I'm about to do, and I apologize. I was gonna say, yeah, flam. <laughs> yes. 
So actually, like that, that I, I have a sorry, small segue. I had uh, my internet change uh, providers this week, and I had an installer come out and like help me. And so, like we we drilled a new way for the new router and modem and all that. And he had to come into the office where I have the Cadence Shrine. <laughs> oh. And I, I I I will never forget the look on this poor. 50 somethings man as he walked in to that and he just sighed and he's like all right so where do you want it <laughs> it's not like you hear that often do you priest well oh, look look at it on the bright side you're not his only client he probably does like tana houses a day Something so like so i'm just thinking he's probably met a lot of people with a sex dungeon yeah, I'm he's probably seen a lot worse things to be honest. We gotta string the Wi-Fi <gasps> to the sex dungeon. Okay. Hey, you gotta have that you gotta have good Wi-Fi while you're getting reamed from the back. I mean, mm. Well the club is not gonna download itself. Yeah, these are the these are the times, old man. Why do you need a sex dungeon when Comcast fucks you every month? Hey! Oh, oh, oh. Number eight! <laughs> Just how big is your porn stash? Uh, physical, digital chat logs, et cetera, et cetera. How big? Actually, let me check it up. Uh, and how big it's uh, properties? <laughs> 1.3 gigs. That's not bad. Hmm. What's the verdict, Milk? You're the one who tends to judge people on this. Fucking rookie numbers. <laughs> Did you? It's I. Uh, I think I told the rest of them. I don't think I've told you. It's I think like twenty-seven gigs. I have to like actually okay. look again. Uh, are, have you mostly just uh, dumped the content of Borus to your hard drive? More or less, I went to 4chan and downloaded a bunch of threads. Oh. So, I remember at one point <coughs> in a previous life and i don't have it anymore um there was this torrent that 4chan had where it was like two terabytes of just pony porn jesus christ damn no th it think about nice it we downloaded two terabytes of porn no think about it this way the brony fandom has done for two terabytes of pony porn more. I'm sure it's that's not all of it. This point. I'm sure yeah. it's more at this Although, point. Like... Uh, what kind of file compression? Like, was it PNGs or was it JPEG compression? Oh, I'm sure it was like because there were... JPEGs. Yeah. I mean, because I alone there... have probably donated from my own sketches about 20 pieces of pony porn to this fandom. So, <laughs> that's just me. Jesus. Damn, Jesus. Wow. All right. Now we're going to go to questions from RK Striker JK5. Question number one What is your favorite non My Little Pony franchise? Uh... Star Trek, I guess. Woo! Yep. Which season? Well, sh no, no, no. The, the, no, no, no. The question is what captain is uh, the captain? Picard? That a boy. No, you can stay. You can stay. You can stay permanently. You're fine. Number two. Have you ever done anything for a non My Little Pony franchise? I yeah. did. <gasps> what did you do? Okay, so uh, basically at one point uh, there was Griffinella. You've probably known about Griffinella who did, um, you know, he was working on Friendship with Witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Somehow I managed to end up with a project with him that was Based on Five Nights at Freddy's. What? Uh, basically, was making a song uh, uh, basically inspired by pretty much everything 80s like. So, we basically did, uh, well, I basically did a music video for the, the, the music. So it was mostly just oh 80s uh, look, like all the stuff you'd see. And uh, I think besides the palm tree, because I forgot to actually model them. Uh, besides that, before the Brony fandom, I was mostly known for a little series I was working on. It was mostly just about Yoshis that would fight. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, one time asked me at some point to help him with uh, something based on Under Undertale. So that's pretty much my adventure around other fandoms. And so far, uh, you know how some people just jump uh, ships to go from uh, MLP to anime or weird games like Fortnite or some some shit like that. Yes. Yeah. I still haven't found anything worth, you know, betraying people. Betraying the fandom for? Like, think about it this way. You know the wholesome feel of the show that is not just trying to be a comedy, but a drama as well? Because, you know, like real life, there's kind of boat happening. Right. See, yeah, I, I haven't that. seen much that actually had boat or that actually felt right. Uh, there was no wholesome feel anywhere. There was, um, there's not a lot of world where you just have the ordinary life of, you know, fantastic characters like you like when you think of uh, fantasy world just think about you know magic and uh, you know the usual stuff like uh, uh, doing some stuff like uh, all of the ring but you don't you know you don't follow their real life living with the fact that they can basically just summon whatever they want like just the idea that you have twilight with within her real life she just just levitates stuff out of nowhere, and nobody gives a shit. Like, it's the most, you know, most mundane thing of their world. That right. Twilight can levitate stuff with her mind. And that she just teleports away just when she gets angry, and just like, okay, that's that's her thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, no other fandom has provided that so far. So, I'm still staying until I find something better. And it's gonna take a freaking while. So I'm just thinking, okay, if the show ends, G5 sucks, I'm just thinking, should I just try to make my own thing that kind of feel like that? But so wait, so wait. different. Minty, are you saying yeah. that it's gonna take a lot to take you away from us? Yes! <laughs> There's nothing but a hundred men! <laughs> just to make Flam angry. Also, the clap. <laughs> All right, question number three. Sorry. There's a bonbon on the bus. She'll go off if the bus goes below 55 miles per hour. What do you do? What do you do? Okay, so if the bus uh, explodes, if it goes over 50 miles an hour, and I'm in the pony world, am I in the pony world as me, a human, or am I in the pony world as a unicorn? I think you are in Pony World as your OC. Okay. Um, but also keep in mind, it's not a bomb. It's a bonbon. A bonbon? So, yeah. and it blows up if it just goes below 50. Uh... It, to me, it says she'll go off. So I see the pony, bonbon. Okay. And sh if it goes below 55 miles per hour, she's just going to scream at you. She's just gonna yell at you and berate you for forever. Oh, uh, good question. Well, if it's a bus, I just have to get out of the bus and just, you know, she's gonna scream at me at some points. But you know, since it's a bus and it has to drive, uh, she's gonna stop and then she's gonna, you know, start back and stop and start and stop, and you know, Lude. get used to it. At some point, she's gonna get bored. At some point, also, <laughs> she—I mean, she's—if she's gonna scream every time it just goes below fifty, is she gonna scream at me? Like, is she just gonna follow me all around? Like, she's gonna scream like a siren. She's gonna scream like an alarm. Like, the Rob is drawn a pony who just like screams like an alarm. Oh yeah, it's fire alarm pony. Yeah, yeah, do you have a picture of fire alarm pony that I can show I you at some point? I do. Give me just. But a that's second. what's gonna happen. Bon Bon's just gonna start screaming. Oh, well, I mean, if I get a restraining order. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what's next on our list, Priest? Now we're going to Alex underscore. That bitch. Yes, that person number one. If you could convert a pony to powder and snort them, which pony would you snort? Mm. Uh, can it be OCs? Yes. Yes, why not? Okay, Nyx. 
Mix. mix. I have questions. Why would you snort you? mix? Why would because you I want to smell the edge. I was like, why do you <laughs> want that? Okay. Why do you right. want that oh, literal oh. garbage in your blood? Uh, yeah, seem like that. <clears throat> yeah. There you go. We got two pictures. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, how about taking Milky Way, turn it into powder, and just mix it with real milk? See if Hell you yeah. there make you a milkshake out of it. It would make a milkshake! Uh, oh, God. Now I have, to obli I have to obligatorily do, my milkshake brings all the boys to the yard, and they're like, now I'm done. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Also, Minty, if you'll check uh, behind the counter, you will see what I was referring to. Uh, behind it. Let's see. Fire alarm, pony. Oh, God. That would help <laughs> me just wake up in the morning instead of, yeah, one of the things that I do that, um, I, you know, I t take like 10 alarms ranging from 6.55 to 8. AM just to make sure I freaking wake up. I it same. Doesn't even work. same. I have like five alarms and it makes pencil so mad. I get so upset. Whenever I sleep at your house, like at six AM an alarm starts going up I'm like, turn it off. Turn it off and I kick Why? him and he wakes up for like a second and says, I will and then falls asleep again. Why do you have six alarms, mate? I can't wake up. Wake me up inside. Uh, how do you not wake <laughs> up? Just open your eyes. <laughs> open up your eyes. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. Nah, We're rather open posting his eyes. in real life. I'm going to the next <laughs> question. Number two. If you were an enemy in an RPG, Minty, what would drop when you were killed? Um. Oh, like 10 gills. And it just <laughs> says YouTube revenue. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right possibly a borderline edgy topic but you've been an animator and you've done the youtube thing for quite a while yes how did the adpocalypse affect you well i was an animator so it's like saying yeah you don't have a lot to yeah you don't have a lot but even less oh okay. like yeah. i don't make enough with my channel to survive yeah, and so like, it's more you're doing it for fun more like than it. every month I can like afford a fancy restaurant with that and that's pretty much it. So it said well instead I just put the money and I invested on better computer stuff because animation takes a lot apparently in terms of um yeah, in terms of processing power. So I have to get a decent computer, even though those things cost even more thanks to the GPU miners. I just thought, yeah, let's, yeah, just mine, uh, just numbers that we just pretend it is worth stuff, and we just make an economy, which is based on the fact that some people just want to buy currency or just make currency for people who think that they're gonna make more money out of it, mm -hmm. which is kind of weird. Like, you don't use it to actually buy stuff. You don't really have an economy order than just making more money out of it. So it's like a company that just generates revenue by existing and people investing, but not making any product, making that investment worth it. So, and then you have yeah. like hundreds of currencies, like this one right there, like it's kind of called Minecoin. If you invest it in three weeks, it's gonna blow up because it's the new thing. More like it's gonna blow. Oh no! Oh. I just invested ten thousand dollars on that. How will my daughter learn that she know college Bitcoin money? Bitcoin net. <laughs> anyway, Bitcoin. Number three. Oh, God. Next question. Start. Number three. What is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Vanilla. Vanilla. Oh no! I am not the. I am not the ice cream guy at all. Can you say that word again, just so I can enjoy the way you emphasize it? Vanilla? Vanilla. That's nice, actually. Yeah. 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 Number four. How many layers are there in an onion? Drink. You drink. Ah, so, as much as you want. 
or as much as you can suffer through. Yay. How far are you into your drink, Minty? Uh, not halfway there, but it's going to happen. Yep. Yep. Good. Good. Cool. Number three, or fuck, five. <laughs> Um, what is your funniest anecdote? So like something really funny that happened to you at a con, something memorable that you tell friends as a story or, you know, what's, ah, uh... that is a good question. There's a few ones like how I made the first, the, the worst first impression I could ever think, uh, at Bronicon 2013. So oh. basically, you know, I did the, so basically I did the panel in front of people, which was really awkward. Like, um, I was told by people who attended that, yep, yeah, this was fucking awkward. And just thinking, yeah, at least I got better since then. But there's a guy who just introduces himself to, to me after the panel. And he just um, asked me how it's going, but in French. And the first thing I, I ask him is, are you friends with my dad? Because, my, you know, my dad went to, to, with me at the convention with my mom. And I was just thinking, okay, my dad found a friend in Baltimore for some reason. He invited him to there. That's what happened. I'm sure of it. I just, it was weirded out. I was just thinking, oh, sorry, I didn't mean it in a bad way. I was just thinking, yeah, maybe, yeah, sorry. Oh. And I never met the guy again. Oh, no. Uh, apparently, it was fine. It was just kind of weirded out. Poor guy. Oh, well. Then uh, let's go down to Hawthorne Bunny now, who has our next set of questions. Uh, which would you rather animate, bottled milk or bagged milk? Uh, bag milk is more, uh, since it's a, the bag, you actually have stuff that is, uh, you know, soft, instead of having something rigid, so you'd have more stuff to animate with it. And it's kind of like uh, one of the things that they uh, ask people to animate when they get started is just uh, bags of sand because you actually have stuff that bends and you want it to you know, have emotion in it. So instead of being a bag of sand, you basically just make it a bag of milk and you have that little line of uh, you know, the, the milk level that just goes with the gravity and all. So yeah, bag milk would be a much, much funnier thing to animate than a freaking rigid thing that just says exists right okay uh number two what is your favorite movie soundtrack uh that's a good question the, you know there's uh um, you know there's the classic like star wars which has a freaking amazing soundtrack and when you just lit you just watch the movie without the soundtrack you realize this is kind of a shit film otherwise oh like it, there's there's some people who just extracted the the soundtrack out of it and just made uh showed some scenes without it and just yeah most of the intensity of the movie just gets provided by the soundtrack. Oh, otherwise it's just kind of okay special effects with people in wide shots that shoot stuff, but without the actual soundtrack, yeah. Like, you know, there's a whole scene that is just staring at the sun and just thinking, yeah, yeah, that's kind of interesting. But then you have the freaking thing that just goes and you just... Da, 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 da. <laughs> and you just feel, oh my god, it's, oh, my heart. Oh my god, I feel so much for him. But, uh, but you just watch without the soundtrack, it just, eh, just looks down, looks up, he blinks. He goes away. That's so all. So it, it's kind of like watching a comedy without the laugh track. Uh, yeah. Laugh tracks are freaking garbage. Like, I don't know who just thought, yeah, let's go with la laugh tracks. So people think that, yeah, there's some real people who laugh at it. But, uh, you know, the, in those scenes where you have, uh, like, the funny guy in a crowd who just uh, says a, a funny joke, you have the audience that laugh even though that's usually faked. And you have nothing else, n nobody in the freaking crowd that actually laughed. Like, you know, no other character who laughs at his joke. So the guy, if you take out the laugh track, is just saying the most 
he, he's saying something funny, but nobody reacts to it. They're just like, he's the funny guy in the group? Really? Really? <laughs> but like, like uh, and you look at, uh, for example, the way that uh, they go with uh, the Big Bang Theory, they wait for the laugh track after each joke because they just think that, you know, you won't have the time to actually laugh before he goes with his other line. This is a reference to another thing. Like, oh, that's just like the TARDIS. <laughs> and oh then you get, yeah, no, it's more like, um, it's more like the, the DeLorean. And then another, another joke happens. Like, and like, uh, there was a, a show that was released, I think around the 60s. Like, it was deemed too funny for TV because they didn't let people just uh, wait for the laugh. They didn't have any laugh track, obviously. Uh, it's the one who, with uh, the guy who just says, uh, who asks, why are you there? And he just answers, well, I'm a locksmith and I'm a locksmith. Uh, wait, <laughs> the actual quote was, who are you and why are you there? Hmm. And that's how he just intruded himself. It just like, it's just, you have the time to kind of guess how the joke is going to play out, but not enough to actually to actually figure out before he says it. So it just yeah. goes with a bang and it just laughs so hard. Or you, you don't even go and laugh because, you know, it just goes qu uh, to quick shots. But it's funny. You feel the fun. And so because you laugh that you don't realize it's funny. Like, you know, there's lots of shows that are funny, but you don't actually laugh. You just find it funny. So the idea that you'd have a la you'd had a laugh track to just be make people think, yeah, it's funny. It's like you have a scene that's super sad and you just have the crowd just cry in the background. And you try to have people just think, yeah, that's and that's kind of one of the things I hate with comedy. Just people think, yeah, that's let's go with the bare bones. Let's just make like for example, like all these uh, romantic comedies that are just people just saying stuff in around tables and just nothing happens and that's all no you don't have much filmmaking in it that is applied to just make the fun more than just people saying one-liners you don't have to feel like you have to you know the filmmaker just wants to have fun by himself. what you're saying is it, for comedy you don't have to have a bunch of layers oh yeah. you yeah. What is our next question? All right, number three. Uh, is Tridashi actually how to basic? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, I've seen his face, so no, not that part. I know who he is. Uh, I mean, he has the quick editing that how to basic has, but no eggs. <laughs> <laughs> like, just right. think of. Just think of friendship as musical, but with eggs being thrown every time a uh, character just says something. Eggs? Yeah. Eggs. You, yeah, you know. Do you have to, to eat all of them? 50 uh, eggs? Cool. Yeah. I mean, you need to have that freaking energy to just throw them that fast. You got You got to eat all the eggs. I feel eggs. bad for whoever cleans up after a How to Basic video. So... Uh... What what is what is this next question, Bruce? I'm looking at it. And I don't <laughs> the understand. The next question it. is: Are you familiar with the demo scene and the insane things they make, such as I, the famous seventeen, one hundred and seventy-seven kilobyte demo? I'm not I've familiar. I've seen some of them, is. like so, some people who just did demos that would just play on computers. But I'm more impressed for the the people who just make it run on a Commodore sixty four. Jesus. I just look at it and just thinking, how the hell did you code it to actually do those effects? Like, um, uh, there's a, a channel that kind of does something like that. He, uh, you've probably heard of Game Hut. Uh, the guy basically explains how he coded some effects in uh, old video games. Like, he worked on the Toy Story games. He worked on uh, uh, some old Sonic games, like uh, Sonic 3D. And he basically explained some, uh, some crazy effects that he managed to pull in those games. And the way that he did the coding was just freaking amazing. So just thinking the demo scene is just, you know, inspired by that stuff and just does whatever they want with just those little kilobytes of, um, of memory. And I just, um, 
for example, there was uh, one of the demos it was showing was the, uh, you know, the in Toy Story for Sega Genesis, there's some kind of Doom-like uh, game that is basically just uh, uh, trying to put uh, some of the toys back into a machine. And mm -hmm. the whole the whole demo he explains a bit how the whole uh, mini game was made. And one of the tricks that he did was the entire top of the the scene and the entire bottom of the scene, you know, it's just mirrored horizontally. And just thinking, this is amazing. I wouldn't have thought about that stuff. Well, so, that's actually it, it, interestingly enough. Um, we seem to be on this like little video game tangent right now, which is perfect. Yep. Yeah, because the next sort of question from is from some bro for life. What's your favorite video game? Smash yeah. Bros. It's just freaking fun to what to play with in France. It's super well animated, uh, and it's very animation driven. Just you see the the way the characters are moving, so you have that little time before their attacks to try to avoid it. So you just get used to all these little details. Uh, there's just all the characters you would want in a video game. Well, okay, there's some that just don't because they don't have the rights to, but you have Mario characters, Zelda characters, you have Metroid characters, you have... Um, they even put Captain Falcon, which he, he's a character, you know, we know about, but the thing is that he was never as a playable character in this game. You just control this ship. Uh, mm. Just like Star Fox, and just the idea that it just like, yeah, let's make it happen, and Pokemons, and uh, even Q and Cross with other franchises with Sonic, uh, Fire Emblem with uh, Metal Gear. Just the so, fact that you have all those characters in a game that's made to celebrate stuff. It's not too hard to to play, but it's full of details. Uh, you can play like eight people, so everybody gets to play and have fun. Even though, even if you suck at it, you just have fun because you get to punch stuff. Smash is so good. Uh, the next question is, what's your favorite boss fight from video game? Uh, uh, there's... Uh, does it need to be about technical level? Because at the emotional level, there's one that just strikes me because it's... Um, Which one is that? Okay, so Final Fantasy VII, uh, the boss right after Eris dies, they just keep her theme playing in the background. And the boss itself is not too hard. Like, if you have the one ring that you equip uh, right before the, uh, that they give right before the, the actual boss, it's an insta win because it, it basically gives it, he basically throws an attack that actually heals you if you have that one equipped. Right. But you have the fact that you have that boss that just happens, and it's quick. Just the way that they made the boss work. Just to let you just mourn a bit while you're playing it. And just realize, yeah, the boss didn't give you much at the end. So... Probably. Right. Then number three. Have you accepted Skeletor, the master of the universe, into your heart? Oh, you! <laughs> 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 okay then all right number four you are in small uh short horse hamlet what business do you start wait what you're, if you're in ponyville. ponyville what job what what business do you start um uh, sofa and quills business actually sells sofas and quills I mean, I'd have a competition, but, you know, just get the word in mouth that I actually carry the stuff I'm talking about. Yeah, just to fuck with them being like, we have quills and we have sofas. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> and number five, do you even praise, bro? Well, duh. Yeah. All okay. right. Uh, questions from Niaro now. Who's Mintier? You, Minuet, or Lyra? Uh, Minuet. Ooh, the mintiest. Well, duh. Like, remember back when they called her Colgate just because they could and some people thought, hey, let's call her that in the show because having that kind of brand recognition is going to be interesting. But what about Minty from G3 of My Little Pony? Oh, yeah. I mean, she's in G3. She's not in G4. and She's been in the background, hasn't she? 
Nope. What? She's the one character all the fans want to see, and they still haven't done anything with it. I thought like, she was in the background. Who? No, she has a character that kind of has the same colors, but it's not the yeah. same. Like uh, Minty, she, at... she's she's a character for me, old in MLP, which is why I. She, she's her basically a prototype for Derpy, who like she has her quirks and all. She's super clumsy. She's voiced by Thebita Saint Germain. She, and there's a, there's uh, a doll of her. There are dolls of her. Like I have one of, of them. Her. Actually, I have two of them. Yeah, I have one of the old uh, G3 Minties. Um, yep, I got I like one as well. Go. I want to show it to Tabitha and. Um, oh, she'd love that. Yeah, and then she says, "I'd love to see her at G4." The singing, me too. Like uh, Amy Keating Rogers, uh, I think it was in 2014 that she had the Halloween costume of Minty, so I'm just thinking at that time she had the power to actually make it happen and they still haven't made it happen. It's true. I'm pissed. Like they could. It's not She has a whole special around her in G three. Yeah. There's a whole special about her Christmas. Yeah, she saves Christmas with sucks. That's like yep. a brony dream come true. But anyway, we should we good. shouldn't stay All on right. this. We should move on. Very quickly, we're going to grab the other other guys two uh, questions uh, because both of them are how does it make you feel? So the very first one is, Minty, how does this picture make you feel? Uh, see in more Zoom. Um, the cutie mark is wrong. <laughs> <It's a perfect laughs> Yeah, the, the, the cutie mark is wrong. The face is a bit weird, but mostly the cutie mark that is wrong. So, yeah, it's kind of like um, they probably got inspired by the McDonald's toys that just had one apple because they were that lazy. Or maybe it's just McDonald's trying to save the kids. Healthy food is not worth it. Oh, man. Like, was there, like, you know, uh, um, you have corporations basically just saying, yeah, we have to push that into our product because of uh, of our demands. So yeah, just do that. And you have the McDonald's that just says, yeah, because of our interest, the toy that you're gonna make has a, li a, you know, a limit of one apple. You have to deal with it just because of those terms and conditions of our stuff. Well, if you liked that picture, we've got a bonus picture for you. Bonus, oh. how does this make you feel? Loading for days. Mm -hmm. Loading for actual days. Really? You guys, do you have it now? I do. Uh, wait, it's in behind the counter? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, the other one. Uh, what the hell is that? <laughs> Show the milk. Show the chat what we're looking at. For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Clam's just like, no, no, no. <laughs> I am mostly wondering a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's it. I'm just wondering a lot of stuff. Like, where's the other sock? That's fair. What the shit is this? That, like, that's what, the what, question. What, 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 what is that? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's take a guess. It's by a weird artist who just said, "Yeah, that's a metaphor for society." Or some I'll shit. That. Oh, okay, can you elaborate? No, I won't. I won't. All right. They values my art. Hell yeah. <clears throat> well, then we've reached halfway through the podcast, which means that we're going to very quickly talk about what we do and what uh, we raise money for. So, pencil, it's up to you. All right, um, I just want to say something before I do my little ditty. I know that there is a tier in the Patreon where I say I will sing a mean song about how much I hate you, and I haven't done that. And it doesn't matter if you were only subscribed to that tier for a month. Please let me know on Discord. Actually contact me. Tell somebody if you know them. Uh, contact me because I need to still do that, and I'll be doing that next week. So please contact me if you haven't gotten that reward for donating $25 a month. I know it's a lot of money, and it goes straight to horses, not to us. So, if any of you have a dollar to spare for horse charity, you can go to our Patreon. There's a link. Meanwhile, <laughs> um, God damn it, I'm not ready for this. I've prepared nothing. <gasps> okay. 
The BarCast Patreon today is full of all this money. It goes to horses and they get our charity. The place is Red Pink's Horse Sanctuary and they get our dush. We give our horses to a horse named Big Macintosh. We give him this dush to help him live. So give us money. We promise we won't drink it away. Yay. Link in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I write Dosh oh. Macintosh. That is my that is my celebration today. I I said Dosh and I was like, fuck what I was Dosh. Like, <laughs> I was actually proud of you for that rhyme. I that said it. rhyme, I was just like, oh shit, I'm impressed. No, because I said it. I was like, fuck what rhymes with that? And I started doing the next line. I was like, wait a second, I could just extend his name to Big Macintosh. And that is actually the horse we support's name. His actual name is Big Mac. Um, oh seriously um there's a horse we give our money to at a horse sanctuary and his name is big mac and he's a big did you name there. him big mac no he no. was already named that and our viewers voted to support him we had several horses to choose from and they chose what horse we were going to give our money to so he oh gets my. about almost a thousand dollars of our money every single year to help him live oh my god it's like when my mom adopted a cat was named and she turned to me and said yeah we I decided to keep that name because of you. Aww. Um, well, um, honestly, if anyone even has a dollar to spare, that's where you, uh, you send it to our Patreon. Even a buck a month helps the horse. So, now that I've done that, you're up, Priest of Pie. We're going to questions from Jammer, who says, So, Minty Rude, how's the cast, has the cast been nice to you? Yeah. Good. Because, okay. number one, can I have the Wi-Fi password? Okay. You have to get it to buy a drink first. Ooh, okay. I'll buy you a drink. Okay. Layers. It's going to be $5. Thank you. Have your drink. Number two. Uh, if you were given $200,000 every year, would you give Vylon a place to stay at or near your home, cooking your breakfast each and every day? Who is Vylon? Uh, let me refresh quick. She's the gross one. She's oh. the gross one. Uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, if I had uh, $200,000 a year, I would live a comfortable life. So just get, uh, giving, uh, although cooking breakfast, I don't cook breakfast. Like I pour cereals and I don't even put milk in it. So that's healthy AF. Yeah. Nice. Uh, let's see. Number the oh, we skipped number three. Okay, number four. Has the disappointment kicked in yet? Well, the disappointment is kicking right now because you skipped no. <laughs> but I'm in the Brony fandom. Disappointment ru runs through our beings. Like you know the the fact that we had Equestria girls, the fact that the MLP movie well. The, did well financially, but the fact that Rotten Tomato just didn't go well with it, the fact that we had Alicorn Twilight that freaking early in the fandom, uh, the fact that Bronicon has lower numbers is going to end la next year, the fact that um, uh, the fact that we only had one uh, true animated uh, fan episode and it was Double Rainboom. The fact oh, that Journey of the Spark never happened. The fact that Dusk Dawn is the first thing, uh, the first animated episode we've ever done as a fandom. Uh, the fact that there are some people in the fandom who think that recoloring and just using uh, recolors as their profile pictures is good. Uh, the fact that we have that much drama in the fandom. Uh, the fact that um, the fact that we still haven't had an episode where uh, Trixie and Glimmer just get married for fuck's sake. Uh, the fact that gay ponies cannot be a canon thing, even though they hint at that. Um, yeah, that's a lot of disappointment. I'm so sad right now. Oh my god. Okay, number five. Will these questions bother you? Maybe. Like the fact that there's no question three. Oh my god. <laughs> Number six. Do you like hugs? Yeah. Yay. Unless it's a sweaty person. Oh. Shit. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, let's see. Next question is from Patchwork Poltergeist. If you were a drink, would it be a mint julep or a root beer? A root beer? Because there's no freaking alcohol in it! <laughs> okay. All right. Now it's time for questions with Vinylon. How are you today? I'm fine, I guess. I get right, lots sir. of people who just ask me by DM, how are you today? I'm just thinking, okay. Oh, nice. And then they never talk to me again. Aw. <laughs> that happens. I'm not a natural talker, unless there's drink or people actually ask questions to me, but I'm not the kind of guy who just naturally asks people. I'm just thinking once in a while, I just realize, yeah, I should just ask the person how he feels as well. But I'm just thinking, yeah, that's not natural to me. Well, that you're here now. You have drink, and we're asking you questions. Yeah. All right, then we'll go to a question from Tin Man. Uh, number one, uh, what is your favorite headcanon of the show? Mm. Favorite headcanon? Um, let's think of the ones that still uh, have uh, an impact. Okay. Uh, well, okay, my favorite one, because it's cute as fuck, is the, the idea that Dinky is Derpy's daughter. Even oh, if it's yeah. adaptive. Although, lots of people ask, and uh, my reasoning is that since Derpy just looks too young to be, um, you know, Dinky's natural mother, I'm just thinking, yeah, she probably just uh, adopted her because. Hey, because... hey. Because. Derpy is just the kind of mare who would be dumb enough not to make sure the stallion wrapped his willy. Oh, you. I mean, oh, that's good at you. <laughs> like, there's a unicorn that kind of looks like Dinky, but older. Well, there you freaking go. They had the sex. Oh, my God. Oh, well, that would explain a lot. <laughs> Question two. Um, did, uh, okay, bug ponies or the gay deer? Gay deer. Really? Yeah. You prefer oh. the Technicolor fucking... Bug deer. I uh, kind of. Oh my god. I mean, visually, I you know the 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 you know the uh, edgy Swiss cheese is more visually interesting as a bad guy, but you don't really have any. Uh, you don't really have empathy for them because they just look the same. They just look evil. So the idea that you have, you know, changeling that kind of finally look like they finally have their own essence of the fact that look like how they should look like you know unique just feels better D though my big problem i have with that is that they didn't give them like haircuts or something that kind of look like haircuts so they're all bald and all so they look and feel more like recolors because with mlp uh it's the same face show like all the ponies besides their haircuts they mostly just look the same. They change a bit the eyelashes. Some of them are taller, but they all share the same. So I'm not mad at their, their horses, just that they could, yeah, they still needed a bit of polish. Also, right. Priest, no one sang the violon question song? It, it, it just happened too quickly. Well, you know, we have- Mistakes we have were made. 30 seconds, blam, sing the file on question song. It's time for questions with Violin! Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Number three, bird ponies or bat ponies? Bat ponies. Oh, really? All right. Yes. Yeah. They look uh, cool. Number four, do you even crotch boobs? Yes, I do. Like, I'm kind of bothered when it's, uh, some artists just don't draw them at all and just uh, missing. I'm just thinking, how the hell do they, you know, if they have kids, how the hell do they breastfeed if you don't have breasts at all? I'm just bothered. Just thinking, you already see the rest of the genitals, so you don't have any excuse to put them. Well, I mean, no, they I feed them like birds, they regurgitate it. Oh, <laughs> you. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, in real life, like the nipples are itty bitty until they're preggers, and even then they're only like little A cups. Yeah, but still. Yeah. You can still have those little bumps in the drawing. 
Yeah. You don't also, get like that. Porn. Hanging, it the doesn't need to explained. be realistic. Yeah. I mean, magic ain't got to explain shit. Yeah. Hey, breast enhancement is a thing for them. I I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Number five. Why not dragon boobs? Uh, okay, for dragon boobs, I'm not expecting it to be realistic. The fact that they walk like humans, because obviously they have, um, you know, it's intro. So you have that level where you can be unrealistic. And I visited E621 enough to know that people don't care about realism. So yes, you can draw a dragon-like character that just have scales and all, but boobs as well. Because I ask you, should, should Ember ever have breasts, though? Uh, I mean, maybe. There's no wrong way to fantasize. Like, she walks like a human, so you'd be kind of weirded out. It's like how uh, Gilda, when she just closes her mouth, you see her teeth, even though she shouldn't have teeth, because of that anthropomorphic nature that she that they gave to characters. Thank God Enigma's not here to get excited about this. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Number six, the moon butt or the sun butt? Moon butt. Yes. I think you're pretty firmly on team moon in this case. Well, duh. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to Uwe Toll who has questions. Number one, what is your favorite beer? Molson Dry. It's the only beer without that freaking aftertaste that they put in all the beers. Like, you know, you have the, the beer company that just starts with, the, you know, the industry and all they have their beer making thing. And they you just have that pool where they just pull that aftertaste in the, the beer. Just just have the guy just, you know, he, uh, he has the, those sheets that he's uh, filling out just making sure. Yep. There's just enough aftertaste in that uh, that beer. Good to go. So is Molson's dry different than regular Molson's? Or? Yes, it is. Yep. <laughs> I'll have to look for it when I'm up in Winnipeg. Yep, he's visiting Winnipeg. Oh, nice. All right. But I mean, it's not like one of those beers that they make, uh, you know, those craft beers. Because, I, I don't know, I, it's not that I won't trust them, it's just that there's a guy who says, yeah, it's kind of like that other beer that you don't know about, just thinking, okay, but how does it taste like? Is there that freaking aftertaste? Yes. What do you mean you don't know? There's always an aftertaste. <laughs> yeah. Like, whenever I go to the U.S., the only beer I can kind of go with that I kind of trust is Corona, even though that's kind of like the boring beer. So I love that you said that you spe specified Corona as an American beer. Well, it's a, American beer is just mostly the fact that in America, they kind of serve that everywhere. So just thinking, yeah, that kind of beer that everybody knows about, but it's not Coors Light, because fuck Coors Light. You know that Corona is Mexican, though, right? Yeah. Okay, just making I mean. sure. Just making sure. But Americans be like Corona, though. Anyway. Anyway. Next question. Uh, why do people like Vor so much? Okay, I think I'm just gonna go with the the idea that people are weird and just go with it. <laughs> that's, that's the right answer. Wanna I'm sorry. Why? Like, you wanna know why? You wanna know why? You wanna know why? Because people are weird. More than that, because people have many layers oh you oh yeah <laughs> like yeah you know we're kind of still animals a bit so the idea that you still have that instinct to just eat out someone it's probably chicks that back in out just someone like, whoa. i'm just gonna eat her <laughs> that actually ties in in number four whoa <laughs> Do you like face sitting? <laughs> but the idea that you have. <laughs> what did I just do? So, do you, you, okay, you used the term eating out. I'm just going to be clear. Do you know what No, that means? not that lesbian that's eating what you out. Said. That's what you said. I was just like, whoa, because we're animals. We like eating out. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, Pasty Pie. What is your favorite barbecue? Chips. Barbecue oh. chips. Number four. Uh, what do you think of face sitting? Nah, not my, my, not my stuff. All right. It well, hurts the face to sit on my face. It hurts the face. Yep. Well said. <laughs> this kills the face. <laughs> Forgotten Knight now has question. Um, number one. Are you truly happy with what you've done with your life? Oh, God. 
We're serious now. Can I lie? I mean, yeah, you can. Yeah, totally. You're welcome to lie on Hill. Here, like, watch, watch. I'll, I'll lie. Everything is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're right. Well, I mean, I got a dream job that's yeah. kind of an industry job, so it doesn't pay as much as people would think, but, you know, I'm still, still a junior. Uh, I work in the thing I wanted to, to work in when I was a kid. I still have... Uh, I finally live alone without my parents. Uh... I finally... I proved a freaking doctor who said, yeah, not good enough to go to elementary school that she was fucking wrong by finishing university and that getting a, a fucking job. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, I met lots of cool people. But, you know, that's... I mean, looking at it from this angle... Yeah. I think I'm happy. I could be, could be better, but could be worse. I think that's pretty much everyone, though. Like, everyone has their own things they'd like to improve on and yeah and then there's the youtubers you know the ones that get, became millionaire by bullying other youtubers oh god we yeah, are not they're... gonna talk about the drama number yeah. two do you regret anything oh god a what? lot of things um i i have to ask because yeah. it was a really okay really really quick when we first met you and I, Mindy, it was yeah. at a horse news party where they had a stripper. Do you have regrets about that day? Uh, kind of, but it's more the fact that I should have expected that. They weren't yeah. saying that it would get a stripper for the freaking party. They did. Uh, they said online, like, we're getting a stripper and everyone, ha, ha, ha. And they did. Uh, yeah, they did. That's the thing. I was not expecting them to because they were kind of joking and kind of Googling it. And I was just thinking, yeah, it's probably just a joke. And it was not. So no. the fact that they decided to make it happen, I'm just thinking, yeah, well, you know, just going to stay because you're probably just going to uh, go with the, the people around and just going to look, just pretend that I'm part of the group so people think that I'm going fine. But, you know, after she went on a break and came back, I got kind of stuck with the fact I couldn't sit on a freaking couch and just, she just looked at me, and that's where I learned a life lesson from. She that. gravitated to you because you looked sweet and shy, and yes, she, that's she what just thing went I went over to you and was all up on your body. Yeah, you suck I learned a life a lesson that they strippers <clears throat> like shy guys. It's true, they do. They're less threatening. Mm. So, lesson to everyone <laughs> listening: be shy. Anyway, as as a shy guy, it doesn't work. Let me tell you. With Next. strippers, it does, my dear. Slam. With strippers, uh, it does. I suppose. Are you pretending to be shy, or are you just regular shy? Because no, there's a difference. Slam is shy, but he's one of those shies where it doesn't show. He's like, I'm going to be proper and prim and kind and polite. And inside, he's going, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, that Truth. kind of guy. Truth. All right. Now we're going to go to questions from Lone Trooper. Um, I actually have a, a quick question that I want to ask you, especially because you're someone who is in the industry of animation. Um, you obviously do a lot of fan work uh, for animating. Um, how does the industry typically view uh, fan-related content? Or like, is that something that you would put on your resume? Where does that kind of line draw? Uh, for some reason, I did put stuff from Luna's Determination, my uh, demo that I showed to get a job at my special effects studio. And it actually, I don't know if they looked at it and they thought it was worth the, um, you know, worth giving me the job. Or just, I just saw that as filler. But it works if you know what to show that you've done. Uh, the only difference is that I took out the pony of the scene because I felt it would kind of clash. Mm-hmm. But it can work. The thing is that you need to prove what you've done. And I don't want the studio to just think, yeah, I just made a thing that was just a hobby and just didn't put, you know, the professional work in it. So, uh, for, you know, for example, there's lots of people who just think that taking a pony vector and just making poses is worth enough. 
uh, for a studio, but you know, you need to prove that you know how to do it on your own. And, uh, you know, you can show with ponies to show that you can do that with other people's style as well. But obviously, with a, if you have a portfolio and you have to demonstrate what you've done, it's tough with ponies. Like, you don't have lots of companies that hire just 2D people who work with existing stuff. There's probably DHX, but if you're going to show DHX pony stuff, they're probably going to look at it with an even more uh, critical eye because they've done that in the past. Right. All right. Then question from Lone Trooper. Uh, what is your favorite heartwarming experience that you've had at a convention? This year at the PMV panel. Uh, so basically it was uh, uh, the, the PMV contest that uh, was there, was sitting next to Victory Dance, and it was uh, li uh, the Light Leaf Tea uh, right next. And, uh, you know, we kind of watched it, and I was kind of tired, and I kind of wanted to go to the bathroom for the entire thing. But, you know, I stayed because it was kind of a jerk move to just leave. And at the end of the thing, it was like an hour and a half long, they decided to show a, a separate uh, PMV. I was thinking, yeah, what's special about that one? Like, was it just just the PMV they wanted to do. At the end, like, I don't know, maybe just looking back at their uh, origins. But no, the PMV at the very end, there was some uh, OC poses we were showing at the very last moment. I just see uh, Light just, just stand up and he just goes on his knee and just kind of confused what is going on. And by the time I look back at the screen, and I just see, will you marry me on the screen? And yeah. just, and my heart kind of skips a beat when I just look at uh, Victory just, and he, he, oh my God, Victory just started crying. Oh. And that didn't help because I was crying. And so just seeing that happen, and you know, I've seen people just uh, do that, but I was from far away and I didn't really know the people. So seeing that with people I knew and seeing that that freaking close just, oh my God. So just the idea that you'd see uh, the Brony fandom just bringing people together like that. Uh, there was also a wedding, but I didn't really know the people involved. But just seeing that happen before my own eyes was just one of those moments. Aww. Aww. That's so sweet. Number two, what advice would you give to beginning animators in the MLP fandom or other fandoms or groups? Okay, so obviously one of the things I've seen with a lot of people when they start in fandom is that they just go with, um, they just do the obvious things of just a pony just blinking and just a pony walking, which is fine on its own, but they, uh, they kind of forget that lots of animation is just the way that uh, ponies react to certain things, the way that they, for example, that they turn their heads in, in reaction. And I feel like they don't put, uh, they don't think a, a lot about the, um, you know, the character, the tensions when they actually act. And I feel like it's something that they kind of miss uh, when they do that. They don't study that much the uh, character action. So I see a lot of people that you just have a character just talking, they blink, they turn their, maybe their heads, but you don't feel the character because it, you don't feel their acting. So there's that. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, pipelining. Uh, one of the things that I've learned, but I've learned probably a bit too it too late. Uh, you need a good pipeline for the uh, the scenes that you've been animating uh, to just translate and just throw into the actual editing. Uh, so one thing with Flash and Toon Boom is that you can make a pre-comp of the uh, the entire scene, how it looks and moves, to just throw into your uh, editing pipeline. So, uh, for example, if I have a scene, I'm just thinking how it's going to look like in context. I can actually do that. And uh, that way you can actually uh, avoid or overworking on stuff that people would just not look at because they, the attention of the scene and, you know, the place where you put the most of your attention won't be to that. So just that part is just, uh, well, that and um, storyboarding because lots of people just put ponies in a, in a scene and just think it's going to be uh, just going to be okay. Uh, some people just go with projects that are way too big for when they start. So just the idea that you do a project that is at your own scale would be much more, uh, 
you know, much more important than right. just do whatever you think that would be the most amazing thing ever. Yeah. Uh, and obviously you can cheat a, a bit, um, you know, use 3D, even though it's meant to be a 2D animation to just figure out the uh, placement of things. Uh, focus on the character animation first and then the background. Uh, I did the opposite and it took me a while to realize it was losing time for backgrounds people wouldn't look that much at. Uh, learn from real cinema because uh, people would just go with the most bland framing ever for the characters. Like they just go with typical close ups. And you, you know, close ups are fine, but you don't feel like the spatial relationship with the characters just fit. Uh, Basically, if you look at Dinky's Destiny, you just have Dinky who just walks left, right, left, right, and there's no... You don't feel like it just moves uh, along some kind of cohesive ruling. It just doesn't feel like she moves along with their, her own movements, uh, which I kind of finally learned about with uh, Luna's Determination, where Luna is mostly framed at the right of the frame, while you have Star Swirl on the left. Actually, the opposite. So that when Star Swirl is gone and you have Luke on her own side and she turns and there's an empty space, you feel the emptiness because of all that, you know, just getting used with your brain. Uh, so yeah, if you learn from real filmmaking, there's some channels like uh, uh, Every Frame a Painting that actually gives some help with that. There's film analysis as well, where they just talk about lots of important and interesting subjects about about movies so you can learn from them because you cannot just learn from animation because animation might be an interesting medium but uh there's lots of filmmaking stuff that is um for example just the fact that we finally have more uh interesting tools that allow us to make more complex movements with the camera the fact that you have that now uh unlike what you could do back in the days and people who mostly just look at previous animation uh, with their styles and all, uh, they might just forget about those things. So there's that. Or just the fact that there's just more live action movies than animated movies. So there's that. So there's that. Also, uh, don't just say, I'm going to work on it later. Like, I'm going to learn in a few months how to animate. Just start now. Like, get, just do it. Just, just do it. Like, get a 30-day trial, Flash, just learn everything you can within the 30-day trial. So just prove that you can actually animate, then you can go with uh, the actual license, which is kind of cheap. Because lots of people just look at me and they just ask me, how do I animate? And I can explain to them, but I cannot understand for them. So. All right. Then question number three is a little more lighthearted. How did your plushie learn to drive, and why are they so impatient? Uh, she went to driving school, like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> like, where else would you learn to drive? <laughs> okay, then why are they so impatient? Did you see how much time I was taking just to explain I was going to a con right before the actual con? <laughs> I'd be impatient, too, just waiting at the con. All right. Uh, let's see. Number four. What kind of wacky hijinks have you gotten up to with your sentient plushie? And have you two gotten arrested because of these escapades? Uh, she did some pranks, which is probably not the best thing when you're a sentient plushie. Uh, although, you know, I'll forgive her because it's kind of funny. Uh, and no, she didn't really get in trouble legally with that, so... Yeah, I guess that's that's that. Kind of well, weird I mean, that I guess look. it's a plushie, so she probably couldn't. It's all on you. Yeah, try to explain that to the cops. Yeah, it was... <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, number five. If you could become any non-pony character from the show, who would you be? Uh, can we count changelings in it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd be a changeling, because that way I can hide as a pony. Okay, then well, now you're stuck on Earth as a changeling. What crazy adventures would you go on now that you're a changeling, and how do you get to Equestria? I would use my ch uh, shape-shifting abilities a lot. I would just shape-shift as someone known. I would just walk around in cities and just look at people, just look at me. Just 
just see how did the react taking. Yeah, no, I'm just normal guy. I just look like him. That's it. Cool. All right. Now, number seven. Please explain why bagged milk is the worst milk. Uh, because it's bagged. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good. All right. Number eight. You find yourself in a white, endless void. A disembodied voice announces that to return home, you must leave something behind. You are given two options. Either leave behind your sanity or your humanity and return home. If you don't choose one of those two options or try to kill yourself, everyone you love will permanently forget who you are. And you will still have to choose between leaving behind your sanity or your humanity. Which do you choose? Joke on the person, I would leave my sanity behind because there's not much left. Yay! All right. Next question is from Mobile Sam, who asks, potato? Fries? I mean, potatoes can be used for a lot of things. You can make fries, you can make chips, you can make poutine. Uh, Poutine's good shit, too. Mashed potatoes? You can make, you know, those thicker uh, chips that be, uh, that they sell at restaurants that, uh, you know, uh, they just cook them on the spot. Then they yeah. just taste like, it tastes like a fry and a chip at the love, baby. It just tastes freaking amazing. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Mm. Yep. All right. Vandamoose now has questions. Number one. Uh, I don't know. Okay? This this next question's weird. How do I don't? It doesn't follow English language. How made you gay ponies by? Okay. Oh my god. That that's um. I basically said in the chat at some point. Yeah, gay pony porn made me realize it was by. Uh, Good kind job. Of, kind oh. of. No, the thing is that at some point, you know, uh, my OCs are girls. So I was just thinking, yeah, let's talk about, you know, shipping my OC and all. Just thinking, if I was her, would I live with a stallion? Would I be fine with that? I was just thinking, yeah, okay, though. So since it's kind of weird to say, yeah, I like girls and all, she can like girls, but also the fact that I'm supposed at that time to be straight. Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna go uh, with her in a straight relationship as well. So yeah, my OC is bi. I, and oh. I'm just thinking, uh, I'm not bi, but my OC is. Maybe? That's kind of weird. I mean, if I, I was a girl, maybe I'd go with a guy, but if I'm a guy, why not? Just taking it, it's kind of weird. And one of my friends basically came out and just said, yeah, I'm bisexual. I'm just thinking, could I be as well? So at some point, I just thought, let's test the theories. I just look at gay pony porn and just thinking, that's kind of hot. <laughs> so I just realized, yeah, I'm bi. Cool. Number two, what food can be improved by adding some really good cheese? Chips. Chips yes. with curd cheese just look just taste amazing. It's like a poutine, but cold. And I have that once in a while when I visit my mom, but not that much. It it tastes amazing with triple chips. All right. Uh, let's see. Question number three. Ah, the ever apparent struggle. Are traps gay? Why or why not? That's the question. Okay, that's a tough question, but here's my reasoning. You know, traps are mostly animated characters. And you know how uh, traps, well, not traps, but how lots of uh, young male characters are played by female voice actresses? Yeah. So they sound like girls, they're played by girls, they look like girls, so they're kind of like girls? So why would it be gay for me to enjoy that character? I feel that. Traps are not gay. You heard it here first. Let's not start this debate on the fucking bar. <laughs> Number four! <laughs> Many times. What is your preferred fantasy race? Orcs, elves, dwarves, you know, uh, werewolves. I don't know, man. 
if I exclude all the pony stuff, I'd probably say that one, Night Hell's World of Warcraft, because it makes some amazing porn of her, of Ooh. that kind of species. I don't know, elves look cute. Nice. Number five. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Oh boy, six. I was going to say it, but I didn't. Go. Yes. Number go. six. What is the cutest thing that you have ever seen? Uh, I don't know. Fan art of ponies? Aw. Aw. Okay. Let's see. Uh, number seven is a multiple choice answer. Uh, swiggity, swaggity, swoogity. I'm a coming for that A, booty, B, titty, C, turny, and D, what? B, titty, final answer. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> now, who wants to be a bar cast in there? Yay. Bar cast in air. What the fuck is a bar cast in air? Bar cast in air. Find out next week. All right. <laughs> On Dragon Ball Z. Uh, fine. Number eight. What is the best way to punish Spike for misbehaving? You don't. Life is already hard enough for. But it's fun. But that's the thing. He's already suffering, so what's the difference? It makes me happy. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, if it makes you happy, why? Why does it make me happy? Because Spike is shit. This is true. Yeah. Yeah. Number yeah. nine. Are changelings mimics? What the fuck is a mimic? It's like, is it like a fantasy thing I'm not aware of? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a so... creature that can imitate literally any object or thing. Well, I guess it is. Maybe. Yay. Number 10. What food are you craving right now? Like, right now. Well, it's probably... Uh... Oh, what are you eating? What are you eating? ASMR style. Let's do this. Sounds chips. like a delicious chip. Chips. What kind of chips? Lays. Mm. Uh, you're gonna just have about. one. Hello, Lays. You know all about Lays here on the Vargast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because you lay with people. This is sour cream and onion. No, original. Oh. You know, salt flavor. <laughs> Fucking just salt. Just like my fandom. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, now we're going to questions from Princess Amore Dudette. Uh, these look like some how do they make you feel pictures. So, here is picture one. Okay, um, is she legal <coughs> again? No, is she legal? legal? I mean, she's yeah. a dragon, so she's probably like hundreds of years old. Ah, uh, did they ever say that? Because No, they didn't say, but we can assume anything we want because fandom. Well, yeah, but you look at Spike, who's like eight years old, and you just know, hatched from his like, egg. So he comes up, he comes up to her like her thigh. So the assumption yeah. would be that she is much older. Okay, if she's legal, would. If she's not, wouldn't. Thank God, Enigma's not here to hear this. Yes. How does this make you feel? Oh. Oh. They're gonna fuck tonight. <laughs> uh, no, they're not gonna fuck. They're going to obliterate each other tonight. Well, that's what I mean. Like, there will be the the children will not be spared. Oh. Well, of course they're lesbians. How they, can they have children? Now this next question is actually a personal favorite of mine. But oh. how does this make you feel? Uh is she gonna suck it? Like, suck my, um... Yeah, she's gonna um, suck your finger? She's going to aggressively Yeah, shoot. my special finger that just moves. <laughs> yeah, just, my special just moves. finger that just, just moves. moves. Right, okay. I mean... Like, that... I mean, if she insists... Yeah, I mean, probably. I mean, looking at that face, I'd have to wager probably. Yeah. You may you get suck away Suck anything with it. you give her, let's be honest. 
Just yeah. tell her. Just tell her it was. It's an animal that needs help, and you, she needs to breathe life back into it. Suck out the poison, Fluttershy. <laughs> yeah. The snake doesn't. Wa- the snake doesn't want to be venomous anymore. Oh. <laughs> and then, last but not least, how does this make you feel? Oh. Her first reaction to seeing a huge dick. <laughs> oh, she's like, <laughs> what? what? I love Dude, it. she's a Philly. We don't know that. She could be hundreds and hundreds it, it of could years be, old. Hey, no, <laughs> look at the tags yeah, of the... I mean, she was on the moon for a thousand years. I mean, so she's, yeah. pro- I mean she's probably like 56 right now. I mean, No, look at the tags in the picture. You have to Philly tag. Oh, what's oh, what's a Philly for? your opinion, man. What's a Philly for an alicorn? Like 200? Uh, I don't know. I don't... Hey, maybe it's Celestia's dick. No, I mean, this per- this I want to say that alicorns just aren't born that way, but then the baby. No, this brings up, <laughs> this brings up an interview, the interview with the vampire dilemma, where you have a character who is very much of age in years, but still looks like a child and sometimes acts like a child. Yeah. Well, is I mean, it okay? if he acts like a child, fuck no. I mean, this is reminding me very vividly also, of Also, explain fucking, uh... to the cops. Yeah, no. He's like hundreds of years old. What if she's a dwarf and looks like she's young, but she's really fifty? Ask for the ID. What's that horror <laughs> movie that we saw? Pencil was it Orphan Black or something like that? It was not Orphan Black. That is that is definitely not what you were trying to think of, my dear. Um, is it the horror movie where the girls reveal? Yeah, old? yeah. But, that's like big spoiler, of. but the young girl yeah. is old. Yeah. Like that's oh. Weird. Orphan Black is definitely not what you're thinking of. You're just thinking of Orphan. Oh, it's just called Orphan? Yes. Okay. Orphan Black is an entirely different TV show that you should never watch. Oh. Is it on Netflix? It's, I, it might be. Okay, Long because if it is, I cannot there. wait to... Subscription? Yeah. Anyway. Like and subscribe if there are things we should watch on Netflix. Anyway. There's, there's a question from the <laughs> chat. There's a question oh. from the chat, by the way. Oh, there is. Uh, from, from Tumor, actually. Right. Tumor has a question. Giggity. Um, Would you hit a thick spike? I, a I hit, thick we mean, spike. would you penis it? No, no. When we say hit, we mean penis it. Would you penis the thick spike? Uh, is it legal? Yes. We'll okay, yes. So. Yeah, I think it, I mean, he suffered enough, so, you know, having... Also, he's a fucking dragon. I mean, if I've learned it, anything from the scalies, is that dragons can be fucking hot. I mean, the, what if they're like scaly on the inside, and it's just like ow, it's, it's just like sharp, and it's just like shark teeth dragon on Jesus your fucking uh, on your fucking peener. Ouch! I mean, if you just had the chance in your life to penis a I anthro just... dragon, like at all, ever, yeah. No, I totally, I, I totally fucking wouldn't. That's for sure. I've read. Why? I've read a comic where that happened. It's not like they have vagina dentata. No, oh. but the thing is, just like it would just be this one fucking slender stick. There'd be nothing to grab onto because, unlike Enigma, I don't believe dra- anthro dragons will have fucking tits. Oh. oh. Which they won't. The reptiles. Then well, I mean, like, dragons don't am, I gonna to, am I going to wrap my arm around all my arms all the way around this thing to grab my own ass? Just have something to grab onto? Fuck. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're into that, I'm not into that. But I may have. But a dude's got to improvise. Well, here's one thing I've learned about dragons: they don't exist. I know. Uh-huh. Rip. All right, now we got questions from Lat- Latrius. Would you hug an original changeling? Yeah. Would you hug a bat pony? Yeah, absolutely. Would you hug a Celis? I don't know. I don't know. <coughs> Can we look up Ocellus? Sure. Let's look it up. Ocellus. I'm assuming it's MLP related. Uh, oh, Ocellus is a character. Ocellus is the blue changeling creature yeah, with the pink funny. mane. But I'm not um, gonna lie. I remember like no. Wait, of is she, of isn't she body. like young? Um, you only well, it just says hug, not like penis. Not not oh. fug, not fug, hug. Oh, okay, I would. Yeah, not gonna lie, I remember like only like one of the fucking names of the student six, to be honest. 
I, I haven't. Sense. I'm trying to watch the whole series in like one big thing because Preach and I like to do that together for dates. Okay. <laughs> Date night for the ponies. <laughs> That's going to be a long freaking day. I know. It's great. Well, we're going to be spending like a week together starting Sunday. Oh, very oh nice. sweet. Well, we only see each other like three times a year, okay? So, Fair anywho, enough. what were we doing? Oh, we're asking questions. Um, so, the next question we have is from Martin Luther Parks, which is an interesting name, and I congratulate you. And it just says, can I adopt you? I am 25 years old. You that don't need to anymore. But how would it be incest, then, if we didn't adopt you? Fair enough. Yeah, like, if you have an incest fetish, you need to just adopt the minty. Oh, okay, so, wait, the incest fetish still works if it's adopted? Yep, still counts. Oh, God. You're not blood-related, it's okay. Like, if you're step-siblings, it's still incest, just not blood incest. That's how the fetish works. Oh shit, my OC is the sister, and now I cannot ship them anymore, even though they're adoptive sisters. Oh, does, does, does your OC have a stepmom or a stepdad? Uh, no, not yet. Hmm, sounds like something you need to create. Diggity. Oh god. Yep, it's time. It's All right, we have one more question from the thread that I'm seeing in Lucky Me. It's mine. So if any of you have questions in the chat, uh, now's the time. Please post them in the Twitch chat, and I'll get to them as soon as we ask my question. And honestly, my question might not take very long, but given the talk about Canada and Poutine and Molson, you know what? I think you might have an answer for this. So, Minty. Yeah. Who will win the Stanley Cup this upcoming season? I ain't gonna say Montreal because it's been 25 freaking years. In. So I'm, I'm sorry. If it's we're talking, about freaking time. If we're talking Canadian teams, no one has worse blue balls than Vancouver Canucks. Yeah, because it kind of sounds like cocks. Well, I mean, yeah, the Vancouver Cox is. I mean, I I hate them. They could. They I thought it was the Vancouver. I thought she said Vancouver Cox. What's the yeah, nice Vancouver though. Cox? And to be honest, to be honest, Vancouver could go another forty years before they get a cup. Um, but honestly, Toronto has a pretty good shot. They are so stacked this season. I cannot wait to not watch it, and then I have some cowork to me about it. Just I'm like sorry, the freaking. Honey. Just like the fucking. Uh, Soccer one that happened the World Cup, you mean? Or, yeah, like a lot of coworkers were just watching it w instead of actually working. Well, kind of because they made the the mistake of actually showing it on the TV in the kitchen. So yeah, productivity just went down. All right, priest, do you have questions from the chat? Sweet, I'm already seeing some. We're gonna go to Lone I've, Trooper. I've, post, I've posted them into the behind the counter, so you can do it in order. And you're gonna have to try to read in French, and I'm proud of you. Uh, oh, no. please, please say fuelages. Uh, <laughs> Quebec or Montreal? Oh, Montreal, because I live there. Yeah. Uh, question from Lone Troopers: Who would you date from the Barcast? Pencil? Yay! I, I would recommend. A bow for you. Yeah, you're a sweetheart, Pencil. No, you. Alt oh. underscore. Um, or la la maison de fromage? Oui, la maison de fromage? Je sais pas, Chris. Pourquoi tu regardes pas sur Google Maps à la place? Au lieu de me demander à moi qui a aucune crise Je connais peut-être la ville, mais juste où est-ce que j'habite. La maison de fromage, je dois sentir le yaub. Oh, my God, I feel that oh, one. Oh, smell. What, what, what languages have we not had on the podcast? Oh, Alsace-Lorraine. Oh. We haven't had, like, India on here yet. I don't know a single Indian brony, so... Oh. Yeah, me neither. Anyway. Does India know... Cool. 
uh, Jam has questions. How minty is a minty root? And what type of mint? Not at all. Whoa. Okay, the fun thing about that is that she was named Minty because of hair color, and that's pretty much it. So basically, in her in her backstory, she was raised by a family of Pegasus. And, you know, Pegasus don't really know much about unicorn culture unless they known some unicorns. And since there's not many, they kind of had no freaking clue how to name a unicorn. Thinking, eh, hey, let's go with something universal, something not too... Yeah, just how about Minty because she's green and white and blue. I mean, if she's not happy, she can just change it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. And they did with calling her Minty. And yeah, the, the name that her real parents wanted to give her was Copper Flames. Have you seen a freaking Copper Flame? It's That's the exact nice. color. It's the exact color of my OC. Is that freaking just? It's burning. Are you ready for more questions, Priest? Damon McRae now asks, Horde or Alliance? Uh, Horde because it sounds like horse. Yeah! <laughs> and Alex underscore asks, uh, can I make a mojito out of you? No! But mojitos are nice. Yeah, but I don't like drinks. Next question is, hey Minty, do you want some vanilla ice cream with mints? Fuck no, that tastes horrible. Oh, you have oh, already something that can ca cause brain freeze, but you also put something that is going to make your mouth even more ice cold. Yeah, when it's hot, that's the best. That's right, you're in Canada, just get hot there, fuck. Yeah, hey, reminds me, last year I made the worst decision of my entire life. I was just thinking, yeah, I'm going outside, let's just brush my teeth so I just don't like look like I have the worst breath ever. And I do, and then I go outside. Freezing cold with my mouth and still left that mint. Like, hey. oh. I open my mouth and I have the freaking pain in my mouth. It's like the worst thing I've ever lived. Next question is How much do you regret coming to the podcast? Uh, five out of ten. Yay! Yay! That's moderate. We're doing our job. Yay! Okay, French time. Um, uh, uh, Soon, my nom de franchise. Un mauvais nom de franchise, Chris? No, that's not a bad franchise name because it sounds good. Also, when you type M for MLP, uh, Google's gonna autocomplete, and if you know me a bit, it's gonna complete with my name. So I'm gonna stay in your heart. Aww. Aww. And still better than what I was called, player.exe. Layer. And Layer. I, I want to hear you try to say the next one because I can actually say this phrase, priest. Um, voulez-vous uh, chausser avec moi ce soir? Voulez-vous voulez coucher, coucher avec, avec moi, moi ce soir? Ce soir. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, that exactly means do you want to sleep with me tonight? Oh. So yes, I want. Priest. Oh. Oh my. I am blushy. <laughs> oh, oh, see, see you in the next con, Minnie. Um, <clears throat> anyway, other other guy. Um, uh, Cabane, uh, Cabane as to say? Cabane as Uh, no, the sugar shack. Uh, not for me to not eat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a restaurant that has just one kind of food, and they have all of them, and it just tastes amazing, and then you feel like you're. Uh, uh, you're gonna have some real bad case of cholesterol right after that. So yeah, that's that's a bad place. Just not for everybody else. And uh, we or non? Oh, uh, basically, it was uh, asking about the previous question. Yes or no? Yes. No, 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 no. no. The the question is literally just completely out of the context, completely in the vacuum. We or no? No. <laughs> oh my goodness is that all the questions that we have um yes just um no, all right I'm then sure. um uh minty thank you so much for coming on uh do you guys do you have any like big future projects that uh you're looking to release that uh you can hype up uh what what's on yours on your plate coming up 
Uh, currently working on the Fall of Sunset Shiver, which is basically the retelling of uh, it's basically a prequel of Sunset Shiver's life. Although uh, I decided to take some uh, artistic liberties from the comic because I felt like the comics, this was like nine pages long. It didn't really have much of a, it didn't have much of a grip. You didn't really feel like things could change and happen differently. So I d just thought, let's explore it a bit more. So instead of just nine pages long, it's like nine minutes long so far. Uh, oh. There's that. After that, I have a project about Celestia, but it's not about, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, the fact that she banished Luna, because I feel like animations of Luna being banished by Celestia are kind of happened a lot, so I prefer to just focus on another, another aspect of her life, which is still tragic in a way. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I just hope that uh, the show doesn't screw up with my headcanon of how those things happened. Um, because I kind of want to explore the uh, how she lives as being a thousand-year-old uh, alicorn. Uh, this one is going to be done without any dialogue so far. Um, I'm still trying to learn from... Uh, basically, I decided to switch to Toon Boom for an my animation for the Fall of Set Sister because I felt like, you know, Flash was kind of at the limit of stuff I could actually do with it. So I decided to switch to Toon Boom, and I just learned a lot of stuff. Just the way I can have deformers and finally have smooth character movements. Uh, just that part was just more interesting to explore. So I'm just thinking that, but with Celestia, is going to be a, even more interesting with that story, which is probably going to be like five minutes long. But I prefer to have a very short story that I put the most work into to just polish. Uh, it trying to head for release next year because I'm still working the script for that one. Uh, for the fall of Sunset Shimmer, I'm trying to get it done by the end of the year, which is kind of tough because everything is just happening in my life at the same time. Uh, and uh, yeah, right now there's been YouTube, uh, well, you know, YouTubers just saying that they've been burnt out and just thinking, yeah, I don't want it to happen to me. And uh, YouTube has been giving uh, a thing saying uh, that they don't, they, want us not to have a burnout and just take our time, even though they kind of don't care about the people who just take their time and their animation because they won't polish it. So I'm basically having to basically go at a uh, faster rate because I have to deal with the fact that I'm on platform with more people that create stuff all the time. And YouTube doesn't like me just taking my time for my releases. Uh, F Apart from that, I have, well, obviously I'm working right now on a movie for Real Studio, which I'm, is going to be Very released nice soon. Uh, although nice. I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not disclosing the name of the movie until it gets released because Please I think do when it comes out, Please do when it comes out, I'm going to make sure to actually talk about it on Twitter. I don't think I'm going to dedicate a YouTube video about it because I by the time it gets released, I won't have footage of it, and I don't know how they uh, they can actually handle you know someone from who worked in it. Just obviously, I'm just a small role in the entire production, but yeah. having one explaining his side of the story in the production, I don't know if they're gonna see it as uh, you know talking behind their back or uh, yeah, just not worth the risk. Not worth the risk, yeah. really, trust me. But um, yeah, no. Yeah. You did. And last, you last but not lot. least, before before we get ready to shut down, um, what's your Twitter handle? Oh, it's uh, at minty underscore root. And yeah, I couldn't get minty root without the other. Kind of oh. a shame. But... It's fine. I need it. Great. But well, yeah, you. back in the days, my handle was still dot. There huh. was a guy, a DJ or something that was under that similar name. I was just realized, yep. Getting the, rid of that fucking name. <laughs> and uh, yeah, basically when I uh, switched from player.exe to Mintiru, people loved it. Like, you know, there's some people who just don't like when you change your name to something else and, uh, you know, they feel like they're being betrayed. But in that case, people were so excited for me to make that change that when DeviantArt actually required me to actually pay to get it done, someone actually took money out of his pocket to give me to basically just make it happen, just because he wanted that to happen. Well, All right. Go ahead, Pencil. Priest, go! 
All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Linty, thank you so much for coming on. I think we we learned quite a lot about the the person behind the Twitter handle, and um, it was really great talking with you today. Um, uh, be sure to tune in next week when uh, we have Chellis from Horse News joining Chellis! us. Oh my God! I can always spot what he's gonna say. He's gonna go. Ah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll make sure to prepare him some sunset shimmer stuff so he can Good. he yeah. can hang in peace. Um. Uh. Be sh if you missed any part of this broadcast or you're interested in checking out some of our other people, go ahead and check us out on iTunes, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, YouTube, all that. Um. But uh, thank you for watching this edition of the Barcast. This has been a non-pencil. Really? Yes. Milk. Milk. Ravage. What? <clears throat> and of course, our wonderful guest, Minty Brute. Oh, toi, mon tabarnak! <laughs> See you next week, everyone. Oh, my name is Flutter Priest, I guess. See you next week! <laughs>